What's going on, Infinity TV? It is your Friday favorite, DJ Treacy Trees, and welcome to this episode of The Breaks. Today is Friday, July 28th, and stick around because you don't want to miss this episode. And these are the breaks. These are the breaks. You know what it is. Welcome to the breaks, y'all. It's DJ Treacy Trees. Thank you for tapping in with me this Friday. I know that this week has been long for a lot of people. It seemed like the summer has just been dragging on. July is one of the longest months I've ever been in. And if you're here in L.A., it's finally got hot, y'all. It went from 70 immediately to the 90s and 100. So everybody that complained brought that heat. But it is back to school time, so a lot of y'all parents that's out there, I know you ready to dump those kids on back to those teachers and move on into the fall. We appreciate everything that y'all doing when you tapping in with LA Sparks Weekly and Infinity uh, TV. We are going to jump right into today's episode, y'all. I have a lot to talk about, and I'm opening the show with Break It or Leave It. All money ain't good money, all right? I know there's usually a money segment in this, but I want to open the show talking about money because one of the most historic things in sports uh, compensation has just happened here. There's a soccer player, Mbappé. Hopefully, I'm saying his name right. I'm not from France, all right? But uh, he was offered $1 billion, y'all. Billion. Y'all heard that right. A billion dollars to play one year for the Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabian soccer team. He turned that offer down. I'm going to read exactly what happened uh, with the order, with the offer. It was for, if you break it down, there was a lot of different things. And I wasn't too familiar with how soccer compensation works as well. So, again, when you see big price tags, y'all need to always look and see how it's broken down. The offer included 22, sorry, $222 million dollars in salary so of that billion he only got 222 million dollars that would already be my problem how are you offering me a billion dollars and i don't even get half up front where's my money going who this isn't a billion dollar deal they should have led with this is a 230 million dollar deal so that that's how much went 221 million dollars was his salary and then it could rise as high as $775 million with commercial agreements. So everything else is based upon sales, which in the media world, I'm kind of used to. You know, you got to you just don't get paid for being great. You got to sell ads. You got to fill ticket seats. So all of those things are important. But it just seemed kind of crazy to me, startling when I looked at that billion dollar price tag that they were flaunting all over the Internet to only find out that he gets $222 million Bye -bye. of that, y'all. I would have turned that deal down uh, as well. And also to just give you some context, he's only 23 years old. So just close your eyes for a minute. Imagine being 23 years old and being offered a billion dollars and being like, I'm good. I'm good. And also, let's just talk about the, the big elephant in the room, the quality of life. You know, France is a lot different from Saudi Arabia in, in terms of like lifestyle, living, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. I mean, honestly, you couldn't pay me a billion dollars to go live in Saudi Arabia. It's not my climate. It's not, you know, their society doesn't run in ways that I like. You know, France, it's, it's a party city. You know what I mean? You can find party cities in France and do a lot of things as to where like Saudi Arabia, like alcohol isn't even, you know, a thing in some regions. So you got to always look and compare apples to apples when you're looking at these kind of deals. But I took it a step further, y'all. I wanted to know if he could be offered a billion dollars in soccer, what is happening around all of these other leagues and how much money are other people making? So I got some research for you here. Okay. The soccer contract would shatter the most recent top contract for Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Um, that was $214 million. So the second largest contract, again, was soccer that he, that he shattered. Messi just came to Miami. Which y'all just saw, he had that game-winning goal, Messi lit. I actually might even go to Florida to watch a game just to see Messi play. But um, Messi got about 592 
$1 million. That's a lot. One billion, but that's a whole lot for him to be playing in Miami, hanging out on the beach with girls in bikinis. He got a nice dog. I love his dog. I saw him practicing his ball, uh, handling with his dog. So we're happy for Messi. But let's go into uh, the context with other biggest sports stars. The highest paid NFL star right now is Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens, who earned $52 million a year. That's about $68.5 million on his whole contract. So Lamar Jackson is holding that down for the Ravens, and that contract just happened recently as well. Steph Curry leads the NBA in compensation. His annual salary is just over $48 million. He's on a $53 million deal. That probably just changed with Jalen, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. In baseball, the New York Mets pitchers are making about $43 million annually, so that's good. All right. Let's look at the NHL. Nova Scotia's uh, team, $12.6 million a year is the highest they're being paid, about $16.5 million total for that compensation package. So also, you know, if you win, they give you bonuses. They give you extra things that are in there that aren't a part of your salary. But we down to the NHL, and we had $16 million. So to go back all the way up to Mbappe, with a billion dollars, he's getting about $300 million of that. He could finance multiple NHL teams with this deal, y'all. He could buy an NHL league, start his own thing. That's crazy that that's how much money is going around and circulating in sports. I'm happy for him for whatever deal that he he strikes. It sounds like he turned that one down. He probably got other options. But I'll keep my eye on it, and I'll keep y'all posted on what's happening in the soccer world and who's getting paid the most because I want to know. We all want to get to that bag. Let's move over to the NBA breakaway report. Now, the internet is buzzing about Jalen Brown's Supermax deal. I just talked about a lot of money. Uh, a lot of people uh, were kind of speculating if he was worth that much. They were in the comments asking, okay, well, what comes with this? Boston better automatically win, and it's, that's not really what happens. Jalen Brown talked to the media, and he talked about his plans for the city of Boston and how he planned to use that Supermax. Here's why I respect players like Jalen Brown, y'all. Not only is he saying that, yes, I'm getting a lot of money from this city, I'm going to reinvest it in these ways. I care about the youth and different organizations that matter to me. Here's how I'm going to invest it. This lets me know that he is an all-around great player. He wants to leave a lasting impact in the NBA and in Boston that foregoes his future. So, yes, he deserves that super max. And to be honest, with him and Jason Tatum, I kind of hate that uh, Smart is not no longer on the team, but I think that them losing this past year kind of lit a fire under them. It kind of hit them with reality. You know sometimes how you think you're great? You walk around talking about how great you are, how cute you are maybe, and then you see somebody who's finer or who's better than you, and you be like, man, I need to get in the gym and get my shit together. That's pretty much what happened with the Celtics this year. They played well all season. We expected them to go much further, but they thought they were a lot better than they actually were. With this deal, usually when people are fairly compensated, they put their money where their mouth is and they invest their time and their team. So I'm excited to see what the Celtics are going to do this year. Of course, I'm a Lakers fan, so I'm, I'm hoping that it's not that great. But I do care about Jalen and Jason as players, as a personal fan. So you'll hear me on my Lakers I Choose You podcast talking about you know, I hate. I hope that everybody uh, has misfortune and that the Lakers can always pull out the win, especially with Boston. You're not about to get that 18th championship before us, but it does feel good to see these young guys doing good in their communities and paying it forward to the teams and the cities that they play for. So big claps to Jalen Brown and the Boston Celtics for using that money for some good. Let's take a quick commercial break, y'all. I got so much more to talk about. Keep it locked on the breaks. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services.
A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. What's up, y'all? This is Lexi Brown with the LA Sparks, and you're watching Infanity TV. Welcome back to the breaks, y'all. Thanks for sticking with me. It is the one and only DJ Treacy Trees, and we are running our mouths this Friday with everything that we found on the internet. I'm going directly into my unbreakable segment, and today I am calling it You Can't Break the Internet. This might be a thing for me every week because I find such interesting stories all week and I argue with people in the comments um, just because I am a troll. I love doing it. I go to the Internet for fun. Some people take it so serious and write think pieces. But for me, I am just fucking around most of the time. So all good times. First thing I want to talk about. Happy birthday to Lisa Leslie. She is 51 years old. L.A. Sparks GOAT. She has been around for so long, y'all. Two-time WNBA champion. Two-time WNBA Finals MVP. She was a three-time WNBA MVP. 12-time All-WNBA. Eight gold medals. She in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And she coaches for the Big Three with Ice Cube right now. Like, how could you not love Lisa Leslie? I saw a, pic, a clip of her on the internet. Still balling, y'all. She's still hitting threes. She's doing the threes. She's still hitting shots. Um, She's doing her thing in the paint just playing with other players she does not look 51 years old she is still in great condition to play basketball so major claps to lisa leslie and also quick fact about her fun fact that a lot of people don't know she scored 101 points in high school in 16 minutes y'all 101 points i don't care if you think women's basketball is weak i don't care if you think the rims need to be lowered the three-point line needs to be taken in all this garbage i see online you know, so they can dunk and everything. She's six foot six. She hit 101 points He's in on high fire. school. Who can do that in 16 minutes? Probably nobody, but in high school, that's really impressive. So major shouts out to the GOAT, Lisa Leslie. Happy birthday, girl. Hope you're around for so many, so many more years. The second thing I wanted to talk about is Call of Duty. Like, I play video games. I play two video games. As y'all get to know me, I feel like this is my new diary space for me to just tell you all my secrets. I play two video games. I play Call of Duty Black Ops only, okay? Because the other ones, Modern Warfare and all of that, the graphics are weird. I don't like them old Western pistols they be trying to have you shoot with and all of that. I want to play Black Ops. I want you to know why I'm here. Drop me from the helicopter. I'm coming in and dropping into the game. So I play Black Ops and I play NBA 2K. I'm not the greatest at 2K. Honestly, I play my team mostly. I might start a show with some live stream and some video game. I got to talk to the producers here to see see how I want to do that. Because I think it would be funny. Because a lot of people, you know, you get on my team. A lot of people don't like to play online because the people trash talk you. It be kids. You know, they be beating you. But I usually just get online and tell them I'm garbage and they start teaching me stuff. So that might be a fun show to play with. So those are my two games that I play. 2K and Call of Duty. So for all of you Call of Duty fans, Barbie is coming to Call of Duty. And I mean Nicki Minaj when I say that. They are making new rapper player uh, emoticons that can play in the game and be like mm-hmm. avatars. I love it. Nicki Minaj is going to be in the game. That's going to be cool to get to get shot from across the map by uh, Nicki Minaj holding a, a pink AR-15. They also are putting Snoop in there. So that's going to be fun because it's like, is he going to be holding the AR-15 with like a, a blunt in his mouth? Owie. Like, how are they going to do this? What are going to be their fun outfits and stuff? Shouts out to Call of Duty for doing a hip-hop collab and making the game fun for us, right? They got the same map that they didn't have for a while they might do some extra things in it but it's always fun to play with you know new things and have new things to interact with the game so shouts out to them last thing that i found on the internet that i thought was weird disgusting and shouldn't you know really exist in humanity anymore is first of all there's a mustard day national mustard day for all people who are into yellow mustard french's the mustard company they decided for their anniversary 
and for Mustard Day, they are going to do Skittles flavored like mustard. And my question is, do you hate life? You don't have any joy left. Why would you want this? That is like, what kind of maniacal menace would put together this awful practical joke? Imagine, you know how you just put the Skittles in your hand and throw them in your mouth? Imagine that being all mustard, just tangy, non-sweet. Mustard is not candy. It don't taste good half the time. You only can eat it on select meals. I just think they doing that just to gas us up, you know, just to give you something to talk about. But that is truly disgusting. But I might have to try it. And if I get my hands on some, I'll bring some on the show and we will taste it. And I will read them for filth because I know it's going to be disgusting. Moving on, y'all, to breaking the rules. Let me preface this because y'all not going to like it. I'm going to talk about the Kardashians, but do not flood the comments with hate mail, y'all. I am not hating on the Kardashians. I am simply reporting out on what they report to me, okay? This is something I found on the internet that y'all could probably find on the shade room, wherever y'all go find y'all news now on these social media platforms. But Kylie Jenner went viral because she admitted that she got a boob job at 19, um, and she doesn't want her daughter to do the same thing. She wishes she never touched her body. But at the same time, she swears that she never had plastic surgery. And I just think that's kind of interesting because Keeping mm -mm. Up with the Kardashians is a reality show that's been following these people around for years, decades, you know. And it's fun for people who are cult followers. But for me, it's like, OK, I'm ready to, to watch some different programming. I don't want to follow the same family around for forever and just see how they grow and do things. I have my own family I'm following. I got my friend's family I'm following. For me, it's not that valuable. But for y'all, I can get for some people, it's cool. So how do you forget that you told a lie and then tell us another maybe lie and then forget that you told the other lie? It's just tough. It's tough for me because you have been re recording your life voluntarily for decades. So now you come in here and tell us a new truth and their fans are so delusional. People call me delusional because I'm a Lakers fan and I'm delusional about it as well as a Sparks fan. You know, LA sports over everything. I don't care if we lose and we having the worst season. I'm going to blame it on the refs, the wind, um, bad vibes. I could blame it on. I don't care what it is. I am that delusional in that way. But Kardashian fans are the most delusional people I've ever met on the planet because these people can do no wrong. It He's don't matter what idiot. you say, how many times they lie. When um when the mama came out with the Ray J thing when they first got on Hulu and Ray J proved that you know she she had something to do with the sex tape, he never did anything with the computer. Like lies have been debunked. And they fans are still rocking with them. So I'm very happy that they have this loyal fan base. But I think it's kind of crazy that they will lie on national color television and then make another lie and then say, wait, I'm going to take it back and tell another story. They just creating their own narrative, y'all. I'm not rocking with that. Heartbreak Hotel, whose heart is broken this week? And I don't know exactly who it is. It's all of our employers, y'all. For everybody who's got a nine to five, this message is for you. The New York Times wrote an article. You definitely need to go check it out. It's called Return to Office Enters the Desperation Phase. <laughs> and I'm laughing because it's funny to me. I have a nine to five job. That's no secret. I've, I've shared these views with them, with everybody. The pandemic let us know that hybrid working or working from home, if you work from a computer, is the most efficient way. We had been doing it pre-pandemic, but we had never been forced to do it, right? Long time ago, I used to work at an AT&T store, and I used to sell phones. And older people would come in and be like, I'm not getting away from my flip phone. And they were just hardcore, not doing the flip phone. And then life would change, and apps came, and then I would teach them the smartphone, and it would just happen. It seems like we're going through that kind of adoption phase, but just with our employers. The Internet is a thing. All of our stuff is on Drive. All of our meetings are on Zoom. Why do we need to come back into the office to all Zoom together? To go into conference rooms and Zoom. All of our meetings are digital at this point. Why are you forcing us? So, again, I always look deeper. Anytime somebody's trying to force us to do something or create an ultimatum, you got to look deeper into it. And the reason behind it is a lot of these employers have long as real estate contracts and leases with these buildings. And now there's nobody filling it up. So it looks like a wasted expense for the company. And my message to all of those companies out there is too bad. 
Your problem, not mine. Yesterday's Defeated. price is not today's price, my guy. You can't ask people who have been working efficiently for three years over the internet to now come into office for the same pay based off of we need to collaborate. No, we've been doing what we needed to do. We've been collaborating how we've needed to collaborate this whole time. But you're in this lease, and now you're trying to drag me into your problems. Pay your bills, dog. Figure out another way or something else to do to that office. But forcing us to go into the office in 2023 is not happening. Gas prices are up. Everybody has already got their life planned out. And again, back to school is happening. People got to pick their kids up. So... Companies, shame on you for trying to make us go back into the office. We're going to go on a quick commercial break to pay some of our bills. Just like those companies got to pay their bills. Keep it locked on the brakes. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Hey everyone, I'm Neko Gumike with the LA Sparks and you are watching Infanity Television. <laughs> Welcome back to the breaks, y'all. We are on the last leg of the show. I really appreciate y'all for sticking with me. Let's go into breaking the bank. Let's talk about some money. Now, NFL running backs aren't getting paid, but rappers sure are okay. Mr. Drizzy Drake himself just dropped a cool million dollars on Tupac's ring that was up for auction. Now, uh, go ahead and go to Google and look at the ring, but it, it's like a little uh, crown ring that stands up on top of your finger. It looks like a king ring, if you will, like king me kind of situation. But it's the last ring that Tupac was seen in on his last uh, public appearance. Now, the ring only went, it went for less than half a million before, but Drake, of course, came in. He dropped a cool million just so he can pull it out, y'all. He ain't got it on his finger. He not flashing it. But I do feel um, some kind of way about Drake having it. I'm actually glad that somebody in the hip-hop community actually picked it up because this artifact could have went to some museum or some kind of exhibit that was going to uh, exploit him, exploit his family. You know what I mean? So I'm just glad that his home safe with Drew Jersey Drake, he deserves it. He got a lot of money. He's recirculating it to the hip hop community. Another rapper that I wanted to talk about is Sexy Red. She's a new rapper. You probably haven't heard her uh, quite yet, but she's got a hit song called Pound Town that I won't re uh, regurgitate any of the lyrics to. But she is a new rapper who has just went viral for turning down features. So what she did was she has sold a bunch of features and did a bunch of uh, booked a bunch of shows, but then she went viral. So she told them all everything is canceled. Yesterday's price is not today's price, <laughs> which I love that people are doing. If you are sitting at home and you're like, dang, but I already told them I want to do this and you feel like you need to get paid more, always advocate for yourself. If, if you feel like you need more money, she in the, she in the picture holding up stacks of money uh, on, in the viral picture, she basically telling them, listen, 
$40,000 is not going to cut it anymore. I'm going to need way more money to, uh, to appear on your song. She is breaking the bank. You better ride your 15 minutes, girl. I hope your career lasts long. I'm not sure. I ain't listen to a whole lot of your music, but Pound Town goes hard. So, shouts out to Sexy Red for having some money. Break out with, I want to finish the show talking about my uh -oh. L.A. Sparks, y'all. Just recently here, we swept the Indiana Fever by two games, breaking our eight-game losing streak. I can just kind of put my shoulders down from my ears a little bit because I thought we was going down bad, all right? Just here recently, uh, the first game that we played against the Indiana Fever, we won by uh, one point because Jordan Canada hit a three-point buzzer beater. Boom! And I'm going to tell you right now, I was in the building. I was sitting over by the kids uh, in, my, in my section that I usually sit in and I tell you all about. And when I tell you I thought they were going to rush the court, I thought they were going to rush the court. It was a live moment. What a great day to be in the building. Right in front of me, the Grizzly Center, JJJ, he's sitting there. He betting on the game with his friend. He's like, I told you. It was like just a great viral moment for everybody who was in the building. For Jordan Canada to hit that shot and to just finish the NBA fever. NBA. The Indiana fever. After the game. I called it on the LA Sparks Weekly that the second game we played the Fever, we would crush them totally and completely. And again, we did because that was the pretty much the confidence killer. They knew that that game they played well and they had to put it to bed there, but if there was a second chance, they weren't going to make it. Their coach was pretty upset. Michael Matthew, uh, who here from who also does the breaks and is on the LA Sparks Weekly, had a chance to. Uh, interview Aaliyah Boston after the game. Check that video out on our channel as well because it was a great interview. You kind of saw the vibes. They weren't happy that they lost, but I was extremely happy that the Sparks are now on a winning streak. I think next we uh, play New York. So we can only see how that goes with Stewie and all the other people there. But again, Lexi Brown is back. Laysia Clarendon is feeling good. Jazz Thomas really hasn't uh, found her flow yet, but we knew coming off of an ACL surgery, this might be a whole nother vibe. De'Erica Hamby really hasn't turned her game up yet, but against the Dallas Wings, she was playing really, really good. The one thing I want to tell y'all at the end of this show today is we talked to Laysia after the um, Fever game. And we asked her about her purple hair, if it was a uh, semi-permanent or permanent dye. She said, it's permanent. You know, I'm locked in. I got my hair. And after that, I said, you know, if the sparks make it, I'll dye my hair purple too. And she said, what, really? I said, yeah, if the sparks make the playoffs, I will dye my hair purple. So I'm next in the next couple weeks, y'all might see me with purple hair. I'm going to try to get Fredo and Michael to do it as well. But I'm looking forward to seeing how the Sparks are going to finish this season, using this as a rebuilding year and seeing what we can do next year to be a contender. Thank you all so much for tuning in to The Breaks. Catch me here every single Friday, of course. It is DJ Treacy Trees, and I will see you all next week.